Did you just get a notification just saying Yes, I did. <laughs> so here I am talking to my very good friend, Anna Jane Dalton, looking beautiful as ever. How are you? Do I look okay? You look I've gorgeous. Got you got nice light on you. I've got a new um, ring light. <laughs> my, really? Yeah, you know, when you go into lockdown and you've got nothing better to do, you order something for lighting, thinking that you oh. might use it. <laughs> You know what? I reckon that that would have to be the most um, popular item online at the moment. I, I was talking to somebody earlier today, uh, Julio Azzarello, and he, yes. also, he was just also showing me his ring light. I think wow. everyone needs a ring light. Mine's a and, 12 inch. And you put that together. Did, how did you go putting that together? I never read the instructions because I'll be there for hours. So I just put bits together and hope it all works. <laughs> my mind my mind doesn't work like that well you've done a good job because you look beautiful oh thank you and it, what a lovely excuse to you know wash your hair and put on some makeup I actually think that you're one of those people that can get away without actually having to wash your hair and put on makeup you've got this air of elegance about you that I just love uh not if you'd seen me this morning <laughs> so <laughs> Anywho, what have you been up to? What exciting things have you been up to? Have you got anything new online or anything that you would like to talk about that uh, is a bit uh, left of field? Well, I do. I got a, I've applied for a fishing licence. That's my exciting news. But as far as products are concerned, yes, I do. I, um, I've, I've got some new products and... Um, I'm pretty happy about those. And funnily enough, even though you loathe the lockdowns, that's where they've come from. They're lockdown products. So, you know, when I'm when I'm bored, that's that's kind of what I do. So you are you are funny. And I'm still just trying to wrap my head around the whole fishing license. So uh, so you're what going to go out and do fishing off the, off the jetty or something at off a water well, castle? Well, um, I thought I also needed a uh, crab basket because I thought if the lockdown down goes on for too long, I can go and catch dinner. <laughs> <laughs> and I and I bought um, I did buy a fishing a fishing rod on special in January. And I thought, well, here's a good excuse to use it. So yeah, you are. So there we go. Gorgeous. I just adore you. So we're getting, we're, we're talking about oh. Anna Jane Dalton to start with. And of all the people I know, you probably have the most refined, most um, sophisticated palettes of anyone that I that I'm aware of um, when it comes to mixing flavors and understanding layers and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Where did that come from? Well, you may ask because I'm not sure. Um, I'm, you know, I'm a country girl and I, I grew up on meat and three veg, very, very good produce. Um, I think probably because I get bored easily, I start throwing flavours together. But what I do, which is I'm sure everybody else does this, but I cook in my head. So if I think that I'd like to do something, I will do it in my head. And the way that that's, and I do it in my head before I do it, and it sort of seems to stop me from failing. So what, what in fact I've done with products, and I've had a few products, I've done spice mixes and meals and things like that. But with, um, with any of them, I, I put everything together in my head and I cook with it in my head and I taste it in my head and then I think, no, that needs adjustment and I adjust it in my head. And then by the time I'm ready to do it, it always seems to be pretty close to there. And so I, as a product developer, yeah. how does that work then when you have to apply that information in your head onto a piece of paper 
so that you can continually replicate the same outcome? Well, for instance, with, um, with this one, which is the confiture, which has a myriad of uses, as, as do they all, um, I, in fact, just kept cooking from my head the first batch, and then I thought, wow, that's great. And then I thought, damn, I haven't written it down. So I just went back into my head and I did another batch, writing it down as I did it. And I thought, oh, yeah, that's the same. That's good. So sometimes I forget to write things down and I have to try and recall them. But um, with this particular one, I, I think I, because I've never made jam in my life, I didn't look up a jam recipe because the concept of having to use a recipe or that's the other thing I do. I'm not, I'm not restricted by convention because I'm not very good with convention. So if I think I want to make something that goes on a cheese platter that is a really nice alternative to quince paste or something, I think, well, what texture do I want? Well, that's kind of going to be jammy and so that's going to have this. But I don't look up a recipe because there's no point because it's not what I want, otherwise it would be in the marketplace. So what I do is I, I do it and I think where the palette comes in is I will kind of take things right to the edge but they don't go over and that's... And I think, honestly, I'm just very blessed with that. I, I genuinely don't know where it came from, but I've always, I've always not been afraid to throw things together and see how they turn out. And do you think that that has something to do with the fact of living in the country and not having a shop on the corner that you had to learn to be, you had to bring some diversity into the food or is it just a, a gift that you have? Well, I think, I think the thing is my mother was an incredible cook, but she was a recipe cook. So once a year on our birthday, we could ask for anything. So we'd do things like say, oh, mum, I'd like a bomb Alaska. And voila, there it was. Now, if somebody said to me, I want a bomb Alaska, I'd say, <laughs> well, go and make it because I can't follow recipes. So if I was going to cook, I'd just look at what was in the fridge and I'd think, oh, what can I do with that? And I'd put it together. So I've never been a person, I, I, I pitched a show at Channel 7, which was, why don't you go into celebrity homes, go to their fridge, no warning, except they know somebody's coming, open their fridge and do whatever you can with it. And they said, oh, no, that's not interesting enough. And then they came out with, a show where somebody went into a supermarket and got the trolley and they did that anyway. So same concept. But for me, that sort of thing's really fun. And that's, that's the challenge, isn't it? Because I think when you do come from the country, you have great produce and I, I'm such, uh, I love farmers so much. You know, and and for me, everything I do, I use Australian. Spicing's difficult because we just don't have the spices here. But you know, Vanessa, we've got to really support local. And so, yeah. So basically, I will um, get good produce and then just play with it. That's what I do. Love yeah. that. So. <clears throat> You brought up in the country and, mm -hmm. you know, you, I know that you come from a family of doctors. Yeah. And that's interesting in itself. And mm -hmm. what made you choose a food pathway or did you, well, was that your first choice? No, I was going to be a, a, a preschool teacher. Oh, really? <laughs> and then after a couple of months and, um, and, and I went out on prac work and... So you actually went to university and did that? Yeah, yeah, I wasn't there for very long, Vanessa. <laughs> and um, um, anyway, so, um, yeah, so I, I went out to this school and I was sent to this, um, I think it was Abercrombie Street 
public school or something. And I was talking about, you know, and and whose daddy does this or whose mum. And they all had like two or three parents of each sex, it seems like. And I thought, oh, okay, that's a bit challenging. And um, and they were the most unruly mob of kids. And I said to one, oh, you know, what are you doing there with those scissors? And he went like that and he cut straight through my, my dress and my bra strap. And I thought, look, I don't think this is the career for me. So um, I just didn't go to any more lectures and... I was probably appropriately misbehaved at uni college and we parted ways. And I can remember mum coming into my room and saying, Sister Dapperty has been on the phone. Apparently you've been badly behaved. And I said, oh, no, I don't think so. And she said, well, she does, you know. And, um, and I said, well, I'm not going back anyway. So they said, you will be a secretary then. You will not be unemployed. <laughs> so off they sent me to secretarial school. <laughs> Off I went, and I never went to that either. And I sort of made up my own shorthand so I could pass the test because they dictate and I'd write it down and I'd read it back. And then they'd say, But that's not shorthand. And I said, But I got it all. And they'd say, Yes, but that's not the way it works. And I, well, you know, it's just the way my head works. I'm not very good at structure. Therefore, are you, very, are you very good at rules? Um, I can be, but generally. I don't know. I don't have a life with a lot of rules in it, I don't think. No, no. I, I, I understand them and I will follow them. Like I wear my mask and and oh, I yeah. check in and I do all of those things when it's important. But if it's a silly rule, I probably, I might go a little bit left of centre on it. So you went to secretarial school and yes. uh, you learnt shorthand and then you decided to... Oh, I thought I should be a secretary because that's I what... I thought you stayed talking. being a secretary for quite a while. No, no, that, that wasn't terribly successful. Um, I fell, I've fallen into things. I fell into advertising. And with me, you know, if it doesn't interest me, I glaze over. But if it does, I'm, I'm, in, I'm there. And that is what it is with food. I am so into it that I, I nothing daunts me. I just love it. And so I went, I fell into advertising. I rose very quickly through advertising and I was, um, you know, working on SO and Rolls-Royce and that was fabulous. And then I went off to a new theatre division that they were setting up. And then I thought, oh, you know, I'll go to England. And I only got as far as Greece and I just sat there for a year well I was going to actually come to Greece yeah. and yeah. and that was my food entree that was your what that was my real food entree yeah yeah so that's had a fairly big influence on your food path yeah huge mm. absolutely huge because in Gundagai where I grew up you know food was fabulous but food was very Anglo food. I mean, you know, it was, there was a Chinese at the bowling club, like in every town, but that was it, everything yeah. else. And you might get a touch of French, but it didn't go any further than that. Now, um, we had Greek people at the cafe in Gundagai, but they served Australian hamburgers and stuff. But when I got to Greece, I discovered, like, my eyes just popped. I discovered Greek salad and that you put all these things together and everything was fresh, you know, and they stuffed squid and they hung up these enormous octopus. They'd just hang them out in the sun. And I'd go, well, aren't they going to get fly blown, you know, <laughs> because that's what... And they'd say no. And so... I spent my days on Santorini where I would, we'd go spear fishing every day. I never caught one. I could never get the refraction thing. So I was always just like shooting a spear off into the never, never, because I just never, ever hit anything. But we catch fish, oh, we, the we, you know, Tiki would catch fish. We'd have a little fire on the beach. We'd cook them and then we'd whip them through the salt water and we'd eat them. And it was the most delicious thing I'd ever tasted in my life. And I think what it, what it made me think was 
it's not about what you do with food. It's about how good you start the food is that you start with. And if you do it to perfection and it's simple, what more do you need? So my favourite cuisine would be Mediterranean cuisine. Yeah. And I think that's very in line with the Australian palate. So I agree with you. And I think it's very, I think it's, uh, I think it's kind of carried through into conjure up really, to be honest, like the whole, the whole branding and the marketing and, and it, it's a real passion piece for you to explore and to really pull the flavours from that Mediterranean culture or cuisine. Yeah, I think I think you're right, and I think I don't think that that was a conscious thing. No. I think it was most definitely subconscious. But when I was over there, and I was offered a restaurant, they said somebody said, "Would you like me to, you know, would you like to marry me? Would Would you like me to set you up in a restaurant?" And I thought, well, no, I don't want to be here and work like a, you know work too hard and have like kids running around and I thought no um but um it did awaken that 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 thing in me and I think it just sat there and then probably I came back and I went back into sensible land where I was in marketing and business development and, what, and all what, those what things you what you knew and that was yeah. your creative space and what I had a, a and I've got a natural sales ability. So yeah. those things suited me. Um, so I came back into that and, and that was terrific. But then I was, what happened? Something happened. And I was, you know, I was loving life, you know, and I, I got married and then I, you know, separated and, you know, the world wasn't that great for a minute, but only for a minute. And then... Um, I saw. I actually, it. I actually want to explore that with you for a little bit because, you know, you are one of these people. You are so resilient. You know, you you're one of one of your greatest qualities to me is how you can take something like you just said. You know, I wasn't happy for a minute, and it is. It's just this this gift that you have of being able to then pull out of that and find a way to be happy. And my mum said I was a child like that. She said I could put you anywhere and you would make yourself happy. And I think the bottom line is that nobody else can make you happy. You have to make yourself happy. And I'm lucky that innately I can do that. But, you know, like anyone at the moment, I'm very anxious. It doesn't yeah. mean I'm not happy, but I'm very anxious about what's going on. Um, but... Yes, so something happened and I'd taken like a little sabbatical of three months. I don't know how I funded these things. But anyway. You always, just, you always find a way. But I just you know, had a little sabbatical and I'd just finished, <laughs> I'd just finished drafting something and um, thought, oh, well, I've got that off my chest now. Um, and... An ad came on for the first series of MasterChef and it was a funny ad. It said, can you cook? And I, I'm sitting there and I'm going, yeah, I can cook. What have you cooked this week? And I'm like, oh, well, I cooked Saudi Arabian, I cooked this, I cooked that, I cooked that. Well, we want to see what you can cook. Oh, okay, I said. So, you know, so I filled out this form and I sent it off and I didn't think, I think that might have been October or something and I didn't hear anything and I thought, oh, well, that was funny anyway. So I was off doing some work. And, um, and I got a call from them saying, we'd like you to audition. And I said, who are you? Because I'd completely forgotten about it. So then I thought, what will I do? What's a bit different? And this was 2007, I think. So I did this because um, I thought, well, I don't want to do what everybody else will do. So then I went back to where, you know, as you know, I'd been married to a Fijian guy. So I, I went flying into the Fijian culture and so I thought I'm going to do a cross between a ceviche and a kakonda, which is a Fijian ceviche, but they do it differently. So, what, and so then, explain to the people that are watching this at the moment, what's a ceviche? Ceviche is when you get 
raw fish and you basically cook it in lime juice because the acids in the lime juice effectively cook the seafood when it's fresh and it changes colour. And um, so you're eating the seafood, you know, cooked, but um, it's simply delicious. And I, it's very fresh, you know, it's, and if you've got beautiful seafood, it doesn't matter what it is, it really does um, lend itself to that process. And in Fiji, they do the same thing. But what they do is they put fresh coconut cream in it and they mix their fish up. It isn't always just one fish because they don't always have just one fish. Um, and they put coconut and they'll put tomato and they might put a bit of onion in it. So it takes on a whole other flavour. So I thought, wouldn't it be fun to do something? So I did prawns and I marinated them separately and I spiced the lime juice. So I put scallops in one, prawns in another, and salmon in another. So you ended up with these layers of colour and you had, they were cooked in these, in, in the lime juice that had had chilli infused and a few other things infused. So I lay, what I did was I lined a little ramekin with really finely sliced cucumber and then I put these in layers and then I put it over the top. So it looked like a terrine when it came out. And I just put a blob of really good coconut cream and a swirl of chilli so that when you cut into it, you got the colour and the flavours from the different... And tin and texture. texture. Yeah. Yeah, the textures from the different things in this layer. It's still one of my favourite things. And, you know, everyone goes, oh, ceviche. But... Um, for me, no, because you just got to make it a bit more interesting. And, um, and they loved it. And then so I did. So much so that. And then I thought, oh, this is fun. Um, so I went through and then I got into the series. And within a day, I thought, oh, my God, this is hideous. It wasn't about the food. <laughs> I, because, and to, to be fair. I thought it was about the food and cooking. I'd never seen reality TV and there wasn't any on at, at that time. So I think it was fair enough to think it was about the, the food. Anyway, it wasn't. And it was just like they had us chopping. I had a 10 kilo bag of onions to chop and dice and it was all about technique. And I'm like, really? Anyway, so after being stood, having no sleep and being stood in the sun with no cover, no water, no sunscreen for two hours, I said, can I have some water and some sunscreen or an umbrella or something? Look at my skin. I don't go in the sun, you know. And they... <laughs> but I realised that that's how they get people to the stage where, you know, somebody would go, boo, and, you know, you just burst into tears for no reason. And it was just... you were just so exhausted and just... Exhausted and you're tired. Out of your comfort zone. And I literally just had a couple of days of this. I, that's like, that's not to my palate, so I'm out of there. You know, that's not going to work. And there was nothing wrong with, with my food. I mean, compared to what it is now. I mean, didn't now... One of the critics, but, didn't, didn't one of the critics enjoy your food so much that they actually wanted your recipe? Yeah, that was Matt Preston. That he asked me for cup. the recipe. Well, he asked me for the recipe. I did a Fijian curry and I did it with roti and I just did a um, some yogurt with some pomegranate seeds and some roasted cumin seeds through it. And um, big blob of yogurt and this, this oh, the dry fish curry. Yeah, that was another thing. I did, uh, I'm a lazy cook. So I got, got the fish and I got a fillet. And what I did was I made the curry paste and then I put it on the fish. I'd done this at home um, because, again, I'm lazy. And I covered it and I put it into the hottest oven I could. 
until the fish was cooked. Then I took it out and I just flaked the fish and I put coriander through it. Well, it was like I'd reinvented the wheel. They're like, where did you get that recipe? And I'm like, well, I made it up. And they said, well, what do you mean you made it up? And I said, well, I'm lazy. I didn't want to stand over the pan, so I put it in the oven. And they said, but what made you think of that? And I said, I'm lazy. It's, you know, if I can make something easier, that's, that's what I'll do. And they're like, wow. And roti, you made roti. And I said, yes, because it goes with curry, you know. Anyway, so they complained about the seeds in the pomegranates and then Matt asked me three times for the recipe. And on the third time I thought, well, gosh, it must be all right. So I don't think I'll give him that recipe. I think I'll come out with a food range that's, <laughs> I think I'll do a whole lot of spice mixes. If I can do that, I can do a whole lot of things. So I thought that's what I'll do. And then I went back to my life after, you know, my three days on MasterChef or week or whatever it was. And, um, and went back to normal life. And then in 2010, something happened and I thought, no, that's it. I want to do food. And that was it. And that's kind of it. I think going back to like the, the master chef and where you had this epitome to think to yourself, I'm a lazy cook. I don't know that you are a lazy cook. I think that you're somebody who just lets the food do the work. Probably. Yeah, I, I think that the food sometimes at times, especially in your style, it's not like you've really, the flavours that you mix together, they they don't need a lot of work. That, that was the idea behind the spice mixes that I did, that somebody could come home and they could be absolutely exhausted, but they could have something on the table that tasted amazing in 20 minutes, which was quicker than takeaway. But as Adam Moore said to me, this is way ahead of the market. Yeah, yeah. And unfortunately it was. So timing is everything and um, I didn't get that right. But I think I have this time. <laughs> I think that you kind of, I think you probably didn't get it wrong. I think it was just something you could put in the uh, savings bank, if you like, and bring it <laughs> out when you already had all the work done, right? But yeah. So Conjure Up Foods, which is your business, mm -hmm. uh, and I've got it up there on the um, screen, what, what does Conjure Up mean? Like what is, where did that come from? <laughs> oh, okay. So I had to come up for a name for this company and I thought if I come up with a name, I could have Conjure and, and we were talking and it was, it was a long night with a dictionary and a bottle of vodka and the names that we came up, we kept writing down. And then I said, I want something that just, it, it makes it easy for people. You know, they can conjure up this. And then I thought, conjure up, conjure up. I'll take out the E, I'll make it a word and I'll register it. And that's what I did. And I thought at that time, because, you know, um, as I said, we'd had a bit of vodka, um, I thought, Mm. I could have conjure up food, conjure up homewares. I could take over the world, but now I just really want to have a food business. <laughs> <laughs> so you started up conjure food and you had that in Sydney and yeah. you started with your spices and then you were doing the ready-made meals. Yes. Yeah, they, they and I'm doing those out of the factory in Sydney and I'm still very friendly with the guy and... Um, you know, when everything settles down, I would like to sort of manufacture out of there again and that's on the table. Um, but I had a whole spice room and I couldn't afford, I wanted a big spice mixer, you know, those big things. And I, I looked at it and they're like $5,000 or something and I thought, well, that's ridiculous. That just looks like a stainless steel cement mixer. And I thought, bingo, I'll buy a brand new cement mixer. I won't put the paddles in it. And I thought, but how will I? Do? And then I've got these food bags and I put all the spice in there and I got these things from Clark Rubber and I put the rubber on the inside so it would connect with the bag and turn the bag so I could 
I could do 15 kilos at a time. It was fantastic. But I don't have the room for doing that up here. <laughs> no. <laughs> but again, you know, so that cost me $300, not 5000 Yeah, and that's why I see you're very resourceful. And then you uh, fast forward and then you mm. moved to Newcastle from uh, from um, where were you living at? It was like- I was living, I'd spent most of my life in Rose Bay and then I moved to Dulwich Hill. Yeah, that's right. And, and then you were there, th- then you moved to Newcastle and you're in a beautiful little, uh, not, it's actually not little, it's a, um, it's an old wool, sh- wool shed, isn't it? The, yeah, the old, the old wool store. So, so um, that warehouse kind of uh, yeah. living. Yeah, I'm just. It suits you to a T. Well, I've never been happier, I'll tell you that. And, and when I'm happy, I create. It's, it's really brought out the best in you. And I feel like, you know, you've really adapted well to that Newcastle culture and that Novocastrian lifestyle. Um, and it and it's, you know, we went into lockdown last year and, and during that time you spent time developing product. I did. As you would know, um, in Sydney, I developed a product um, that was sliced lemons that was spiced and cured and suspended in olive oil. And I entered them at um, RAS. RAS and I got a silver medal, and um, which, you know, knocked me over with a feather. I thought I, you know, I was very surprised. Anyway, so that was fabulous, except in the packaging of them, I'd, I'd chosen a jar, not dissimilar to this, but... Apparently the lids had an incredible failure rate. And so I had all of this product. I'd wanted to do it in um, vacuum pack bags, but I'd Darren, I'd gone to Darren Templeman, I'd gone to um, who else? All these chefs. I said, come on, let I even went to the manufacturer of the machine. And I'm like, come on, guys, we can do this. We can get this in a bag. So it'll just hang on a thing at a register and someone will say, I'll take a bag of those. Well, they kept fermenting in the bag and kept exploding. So that wasn't an option. So I went to glass, which everyone says is lovely. However, there is, I lost so much money on all of the olive oil leaked. Oh. So I had to take it off the market, but I'm onto something and I've, I think I've found a solution for it. Um, so um, I'm hoping to bring those back. So lemons, I've always loved. And that's a cracker of a product and I want to bring it back because it just it takes a meal to another level. And that's what I mean. If you've got good produce, just you can put something with it that just enhances it. Um, so, yeah, so I've always loved lemons. And when I came up and last year when we went into lockdown, I it's not that I don't, it's not that I miss people so much, but being told I can't see people is what does me in, you know. So... Um, I'd always thought with the lemons, oh, gosh, um, I don't want any wastage. And I thought I'm going to take the bits from the lemon that I can't use in those sliced lemons and see what I can do with them. And that's when the idea of um, the confiture came up. So... When I was in lockdown last year, I genuinely thought about it and I thought, oh, I think I might buy some lemons and have a go at that now. I've cooked that in my head. I've got it. And that is what came out. And the testing of it has, I tested it widely. I've given away more than I've sold, but I have not had one negative response to it. And I'm just, the the profile of it is very interesting because it's aromatic and it's got lots of layers and layers of flavour. And you might think it's a jam that goes on a cheese board or a grazing board, but I've used it in salad dressings. I've used it in a million different things. Yeah. It's very versatile. Yeah. I am the same. I, I mean, you get. I, I was fortunate that, you know, you asked me to try it back when you first started to develop mm. it. And, I mean... 
I just have it with everything. It doesn't, I know that you said that there's a couple of things that you haven't really loved it with it, but I haven't found anything yet that I haven't wanted to just lap it on. It's just beautiful. But talk to me about Coffeture. Why did you choose Coffeture? I mean, because. I chose Coffeture because I didn't want to call it jam. Yeah. And I'm struggling to find another word for it because the consistency by its very nature is um, it's jamming. Mm. Well, I can't get the lid off. I'll have some here somewhere. Um, anyway, it's like a jam and it's got pieces through it. And so, but I didn't want to call it and I wanted it to be, it's just not a jam. It's, it's not more a than jam. A, it isn't a jam. It's jam more than a jam. Jam dilutes it. Jam dilutes what it actually is. Yeah, I think it demeans it a little bit, even though confiture technically means jam, I guess. But the flavour profile in this, which there's somebody said to me this morning, they said, I need more of that. And I said, oh, you can have more. You can buy more. Just go into the shop and buy it. You know, and they said, okay, I will. And she said, what's in there? There's something in there that is absolutely addictive. And I said, I don't know, but I'm happy it's that you the find AJ that. It's AJ Love. It's just the AJ Love. I think it might be. I, I think mean, it, it is. is genuinely made with love. And what I've done is I've taken that flavour palette and I've made it into a syrup. Yes. And I've also come out with a salad dressing. What a lot of people might know about salad dressings is see how lovely and creamy that looks. Yeah. I've got I've got no um I sent Vanessa some, but Australia Post has not done its job. Um the this has no emulsifiers, and this is where I think balance is important. I just um this is all olive oil, no water, no numbers. Nothing I do has numbers preservatives or anything everything is very natural because that's important to me you know Absolutely. and um yeah it's very straightforward but this it's good on hot potatoes hot vegetables any salad whatever you pasta well I haven't because I'm not a big pasta eater because I've put on 14 kilos up here so I don't need to eat pasta, Vanessa, but if you'd like to try that for me, that'd be awesome. I'll put on more than 14 kilos. I don't, <laughs> I don't need to eat pasta. This little mother here, this is wonderful. If you do um, last night, this is, I did use this last night. I did a chicken that had um, my North and African spice. you and I spoke. Actually, before you go into that, you and yeah. I spoke and you were in a bit of a, um, should we say, it, it was like one of your little unhappy moments, right, which don't happen very often. Mm. And then you said to me, but, Vanessa, I've got chicken tonight and it's all going to be okay. I said I'm going to put a chook in the oven and a cup of tea and a chook makes the world a better place. That's right. Yeah. And I was so, like, I love that. So I got this whole chook because I remember last year in lockdown I went to buy a chook and there weren't any and I found one and I rang my bubble friend and I said it's What's on. What's bubble friend? I've got a friend who I can see during oh, lockdown. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. You know, you single people need a bubble friend. You're not single so you don't need a bubble friend. <laughs> but the rest of us get sick of ourselves so we need a bubble friend. Anyway, so I, I was like a woman from a an Eastern Bloc country, I'm like, I've got a chook. We're having roast chook. So when we went into lockdown up here, I couldn't get into the shops until the Friday afternoon of lockdown because everybody went absolutely berserk. There were uh, people turned into aggressors. There were cars around car parks. It was extraordinary. Anyway, so when I was in there, I thought, I think I might grab a chook while I'm here because I don't want to have to go through that feeling again. So yesterday I got the, um, I've got a Northwest African spice that I use. I put that on the outside. I chopped up a lemon, put that up the clacker, and then I just put a bit of olive oil, threw it in the oven. And then when I took it out, it seemed to have a lot of juice. So I juiced the lemons into it. And then I thought, oh, I won't make a gravy. 
I threw it into a pan. I threw a couple of tablespoons of this in with it, reduced it a bit, my goodness me, that combined with the spicing, it just took it to another level. And see, that's what I want people to do is never be afraid to try anything, you know, because it's like, it's like my mother once said to me, she'd done my, she was a master decorator and she'd done my bedroom. She had striped wallpaper and she had floral on the beds. And I'm like, well, that's wrong, isn't it? And she said, no, it's not. Sit in your room. And we'll try and work out what I've done and come and tell me. And I said, oh, okay. And then it all went tick, 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 tick. And I said, oh, every colour in the stripe is in the pattern. And she said, yes. If you have something that connects everything, and I apply it in my life all the time, if you have something that connects everything, everything will be all right. So if I've got lemons up the chook and I've got spice and I know what some of the spices that are in there and are in here, I know that I've got that link. So you can just put it together and, you know, do it with, do it with lamb chops, do it with pork, you know, just with one of my favourite things is to use this with um, chops cook them in a pan, take them out, deglaze with a bit of wine, throw in a big knob of butter, throw in some of that, instant. And what's that called? <laughs> oh, that, that, that would be a syrup to citron. So it's a lemon, it's a spiced lemon syrup. And it's really bloody good, I've got to say. I've run these past some pretty hard judges. And also this is fabulous in martinis. And it's fabulous if you do a um, uh, parsley to sarn, you know, if you, if you make like a parsley water out of it and you put some of this vodka, equal parts of this vodka and the to sarn, and then you top it up with soda water and put a sprinkle of parsley, that's a really good drink. That's so, you, know. you were actually playing around with cocktails there for a bit, weren't you? I'm playing around with them every day at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> but it's going to be a better time to do it, right? <laughs> Absolutely. I've done, I said I'd do seven days of martinis. I've done three in about six days, but I might do another one today. I did, I did, oh, I put some of this with chopped up strawberries. I whacked it in the microwave and then I blended it. Then I put that in with the martini, fabulous. Why don't you, yeah. put, what, anyway, so, yeah. so if anyone wants to like purchase these products, it, it's very simple. Um, what, what, what do you suggest they, how do they do that? If they go to conjureupfood.com.au, they'll find them on there. Um, and um, now that I've got grown-up product shops and things, it makes it very easy. Um, and don't be afraid to ask me for recipes. I did a, a fabulous um, a friend of mine has a, a great duck farm, Beth, from yes, Barrowong yes. Island. Um, so I have a constant supply of ducks. It's the only duck I use. And so I confeed a whole duck. And then I took all the meat off and I did a duck salad and I used the salad dressing, the vinaigrette. Amazing. You know, That's it's incredible. just, you just, I think food should be fun. You know, food should be fun. Well, especially at the moment, I feel like it's, um, it's one of the only fun aspects we have going on at the moment <laughs> is, Yep. Is, the, is the food you know and obviously the cocktails that you're obviously making yeah but I I, I limit myself to one a day okay <laughs> you don't want to be stepping out of that bubble girlfriend <laughs> <laughs> yeah well you know everyone had said that I had to get back into dating and they'd given me a deadline of September and I'm like 
Hallelujah. Thank God for the lockdown. <laughs> I said, I'm safe to one of them. <laughs> That's hilarious. So, I know. You don't want to date? Oh, look, I would love to date, but I read a book. Somebody gave me a book, which is indicative of my problem, and it was like how to not die alone. And I thought, I think they're telling me something. And basically, the the moment in it that I thought, oh, yeah, I did need this book was when it said, you think you're too fat, you don't think you're attractive enough, you think this, you think that. And I'm going, yes, yes, yes. But what you don't realise is the other person is thinking the same things. And I'm like, no, they're not. And the, and the book's going, yes, they are. And I'm like, wow. And you know what I mean? So that was a bing bing moment. But look, essentially, I think food doesn't have to be fussy. Food just has to be really good food, you know. I don't, I don't do well if I have a lot of preservatives because I don't eat them. Yeah. I cook everything from scratch. Actually, um, a dietitian said to me once, how do I convey to my clients to, how do I make them do a healthy shop? And I say it to everyone. The answer is, and there's a book in this, if you cook everything from scratch, you will pay no GST. And if you pay no GST, you have a very healthy trolley. And if you cook everything from scratch, whether you're gluten-free, dairy intolerant, allergic to this, allergic to that, allergic to, you know, I'm, I'm gluten intolerant, okay? But I, I, it does my head in the way people go on about intolerance. If you don't want to suffer from any reactions, cook from scratch and do it well and you will never have a problem. There is not a thing that I miss out on with gluten because I made myself make pastry that was as good. I'm working on the perfect gluten-free croissant at the moment. That could be this. That's exciting. Project. I mean, your pastry, yeah. shells, your pastry shells are beautiful. Well, they're indiscernible. And see, I had catering jobs booked for that. This is part of the anxiety. I had catering jobs booked and they're gone. Um, you know, even September's are cancelled. So that's, you know, that's one of those things. But um Everything I cater is gluten-free. I never talk about it. But then, you know, somebody will say, oh, you know, I'm gluten-free. And I'll go, oh, are you? That's okay. Everything is gluten-free. And they go, oh, wow. So why do you choose not to talk about it? Because people get obsessed, Vanessa. I, I, I thought... I'll just go and join a couple of sites to see what's happening. And there are like these headlines, I've been glutened, you know, for goodness sake. Yeah, if you're celiac, you have to be very, very careful. I'm not celiac, but I don't like how it makes me feel. So I'm very careful. But you know what? It's one of those things. You know how somebody says, yeah, how are you? And you go, oh, I'm okay. And then, you know, really the response should be, well, that's good because if there's any problem, nobody really cares. And that's what gluten-free is. That's what any food allergy is. It's in your head, not that you have it, you have it. Absolutely. But in your head, it's the biggest thing in the world. To everybody else, it's just a pain in the ass that they have to change the menu for. I catered, I catered a 40-year-old um, Din, big dinner party and um because I use my own products um I said you need to tell me any allergies blah 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 I said everything's gluten-free you know boom 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 she said oh I've got somebody with a citrus allergy and I'm like eh, citrus everything I do is citrus <laughs> and my son said so they just don't like it and she said no she carries an EpiPen and I said done no problem <laughs> So I, I cooked hers in a separate oven, did all of those things, made separate, kept everything separate, you know, and that was fine. But that's an allergy. 
That's right. You know, yes. That's an allergy. So, um, yeah. But I love it's... it when you go to conferences and, you know, people start out as gluten free. You know, I'm gluten free this and I'm gluten free that. Then they see what comes out in morning tea and afternoon tea and at lunchtime it's like, yeah, sorry, I'm no longer gluten free. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that's absolutely right, you know. And um, but those those tart shells I do, I still do those. I do a lot of I do a lot of catering things. Like I can do a an amazing amazing tarts, and nobody has a clue they're gluten free. And by the way, I don't know. You probably didn't see it, but I did a little live cooking thing, and I did this amazing blue cheese ricotta and um, um, tart with leek. Right. It was fabulous. It's a fabulous recipe. And what I did was on, on the, um, I'd um, I, I sort of put some of the product on it and, and, you know, it just gives it another layer. And so I took it out and I'm like, here it is. And everyone's going, oh, that's amazing. You know? And I'm getting comments about it. But, you know, this is, <laughs> this is the type of thing that I do and it makes me feel like, my IQ is maybe 49. I, I, <laughs> I went straight up under the tart tin. The rim came down. It was boiling out of the oven. So, of course, I burnt myself, flipped the tart straight on its face, and I said, right, well, let's see if we can get that back. <laughs> wasn't going to happen. It was just this mess on the table. So I thought, well... You know, I can no, deconstructed. Get up. <laughs> deconstructed beyond deconstructed. And I just thought, oh well. So I had a taste and I said, well, look, it tastes amazing. So, you know, it just didn't, it was just a mound of it was unbelievably bad. And I just thought, you know what? Sums me up. Any chef would have put something there, put it on there. So the ring went to the bottom and there was the tart, and then you got the tart. And you put it there and then you cut a perfect slice and you put it on the plate and you go, isn't this wonderful? Not me. Whoop. Oops. <laughs> but I did learn from it. I won't do that again. So food you're should like be fun and it just should be good. You're like the unconventional Martha Stewart. Oh, yeah, except she's so, she's so, I love Martha Stewart. I'm yet to see her cooking with Snoop Dogg, but there's something about that that really works for me. You know, I can just, I just would love to do something like that. Well, you know? then, you know, you know what? You saying I would just love to do something like that mm -hmm. is you giving yourself a licence to do it. Like, I have no doubt that you could reach out to Olivia Newton-John tomorrow and do a cooking doing a cooking something you know the, through the love of food you just could make it happen I just see that the thing is I do love food and people said to me when I was in Newcastle and they'd noticed that I'd I'd bulked up a bit you might say and they said well what what what's happening and I said well up here, people like to eat and drink, and they're two of my favourite things, so I'm happy, you know. And then I went to, oh, Adam Moore, I went to his birthday in Sydney and I was sitting opposite someone and the food came out and I'm just like, and I just grabbed one and I got this. Adam, Jane, where are your food manners? Have you forgotten that we need to take photos? And I said, ah, uh, yeah, we just eat in Newcastle. Sorry. And I thought, oh dear, it's a. You're right. The culture up here is so different. You live. It's not yeah. about perception. You actually live, and you have a great time. I think that probably one of the things to come out of COVID is is that people are starting to appreciate that that more than ever. Mm. We're, we're forgetting about you know the taking of photographs. I mean, it just doesn't mean anything. Like. It, it's becoming, life's becoming a lot more real, I, I think, anyway. You know, the conversations we're having, the, the people we're connecting with, it's, it's all very real. It's, it, it is. And, and the thing is that what I, what I love about this pandemic, if you can love anything about it, is I think what it's going to do is it's actually going to do away with wankery because nobody okay. has done it. Nobody cares. 
I don't. You know, I actually went to the coffee shop in my slippers. I forgot. <laughs> Everyone went, hello. And I'm like, oh, hi. And I bet you, though, like I that. bet you, though, the other 95% of you looked amazing. <laughs> don't worry about that, Vanessa. You've got to find me on the right day at the moment. As I said, <laughs> delighted I could wash my hair and put on some makeup. <laughs> So if anyone wants to reach out, say hi to Anna Jane, you've got a Facebook page, you've got, for Conjure Up Food, you've got your own Facebook page that um, you like to share your thoughts and opinions. And, and look, we would, I'm, I'm in talks with a distributor at the moment, so it's just been against us. So I can't get it into Sydney because I can't get down there and um, it, it will all happen and that's great and... You know, I just, I just, and if anybody buys product, don't feel that they can't ring me and ask me if, if, about an application of it because I need to put, and God knows I'll have the time, but I probably won't do anything because I've got too much time, but I should be putting more recipes up. And what I'm going to try and do now that I have my 12-inch ring light is I'm going to try and do some really snappy little videos of quick recipes with everything so that you can look at them and go, boom. Oh, that sounds like I a really do good that. Idea. But I also think too that it's important for us all to kind of remember at the moment that we, we still are celebrating birthdays. People are still having birthdays. Yes. People like to have a little bit of a cheer up. So I've actually been using uh, this as an excuse to send a little something to somebody just to say, hey, I'm thinking of you because one, it's supporting mm -hmm. you, and secondly, it's um, it's just leaving a nice thought with someone that you know is probably not doing so well during the time, or they're just celebrating a birthday. Yeah, well, it is a it's a great present with Father's Day coming up. It's ideal because you know for marinades and barbecuing, and even Dad as the chef in the kitchen, there's so much he can do with it. You know, mm -hmm. it's really, really good. I think and, my dad um, would have absolutely loved that. I actually oh, so I gave him some. I think I, I gave him some um, last year to try and he he enjoyed it. So that's good to, to yeah, I didn't even think I did, catch, I did catch a well-known food person eating it out of the jar. He shall remain nameless. And I said, what are you doing? He said, it's mine now. <laughs> <laughs> and what is Dane say what does Dane Richards what was his comment about it well he said AJ you've cracked it boards have been dying for something that isn't manky quince paste basically and he, he he loves it he's a great supporter actually he just tried this yesterday the salad dressing I wanted him to try it because he and 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 Fran Schurer they're brutal you know, if they think there's a problem, they'll be telling you. And he just said yesterday that he he loved it. He loved the texture of it. He loved the flavour. He loved it, basically the nuance of it. He said it's 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 a very interesting flavour. And I said, what about the crossover of the flavour between you know the confiture? And he said, oh yeah, there are similarities, but they're not the same. Therefore, they can stand independently. And you know that for me is very very good feedback and you know he said do I put it in the fridge well I wouldn't because it'll go solid because there's no water in this this is pure Australian olive oil you know that's actually a really important point because I know that um our first reaction is that once we do open it to put it in the fridge mm. and that's a really important note to say well I actually wouldn't be putting it in the fridge it'll separate it'll you know, it, it'll change. Well, it probably the... will separate anyway, but just give it a shake. It'll go straight back together. Awesome. All right, yeah. my love. Well, we've actually been chatting for an hour. Can you believe it? Really? Yes. You are so good at this because I was really nervous. Well, so you wouldn't have you. known it. Uh, I said to you, just trust me, you'll be fine. Yeah, but you're so good at this. And thank you so much for having me on because I've been enjoying the series I've been enjoying coming in and, and having a listen and you know uh, you've had some amazing people on and I've just I, I enjoy it and that's that's my three o'clock 
<laughs> That's well, I think it's really important if there's anything at all at the moment while all of us are, are, are facing challenges in our own way and in our in and diff, what, what's challenging you may not be a challenging me but at the end of the day we all have a love for food and mm. we all love we all love our industry and I think that there's nothing more important at the moment than shedding a little bit of cheer and and um, creating that bit of positive connection. I think I think it is, and that has been my joy in Newcastle because that is what has brought together. I live in an amazing community, and the thing that brings us all together is we get around the table, and it's food, and it's good local produce. Whether it's a, you know, a, a what are those things called a hoggett, you know, a tutu, um, pulled off Pakara Estate so that I can have a shoulder of it. A great, amazing providors up here. I've developed a sausage for one of them, you know, a that's beef, right. and, you know, and that's, um, um, if anybody in Sydney wants a sausage, I mean, somebody who's a butcher, I'm, I'm not, gonna, not sending sausages to Sydney, but, you know. <laughs> um, yeah, it's just, it's, it's an amazing sausage. People who don't like sausages say, I like that sausage. So, again, am I a sausage maker? No, but am I going to have a go? Yeah. Love you, AJ. I love you too, Vanessa. You be good. Stay Thanks. in that bubble. Stay in the bubble and stay well. I love my bubble. Good. I'm, I'm yeah. vaxxed now. I'm double vaxxed. How are you feeling? Good? Uh, quite good. I had my vax yesterday. Yeah. So um, I've, I I kind of feel a little bit like I've got a bit of a, a head fog today. So yeah. when I'm reading my emails, I have to read them about three or four times. <laughs> they're just not sinking in. I was a bit worried about going into doing this with you today because I'm like, I've got to be on my A game, got to be on my A game. But we got through it. And that's oh, no, good. thank you. You're, you're just a gem. I love you to death. I love you to death too. Anyway, okay. lots, lots of love, my friend. You take care. Thanks so much. Okay, thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye, everybody.